My name is Kevin Zorn. I'm a urologist at the University of Montreal. I'm an associate professor of urology. I started off my practice here in Chicago at the University of Chicago after my fellowship and moved back to Montreal, Canada to develop the robotics program and BPH program at the University of Montreal in 2010. The use of ultrasound has greatly improved our ability to stratify patients based on their size of prostate, their volume, their configuration to different types of treatments which have now become available in the last few years and are dependent on the size of the prostate. Personally, I've used the device as mentioned over a year and a half and as can be seen, I've been able to do over 600 ultrasound examinations with over 17 hours of collective ultrasound usage with the system. We'll review a couple of cases to demonstrate how or why it was used. So the first is our examination of a gentleman who presented with a asymmetric scrotum and obviously in our differential is a hydrocele, a varicocele, or other diagnoses such as hernia. So in this instance, the patient was laid down. We did our physical exam, followed up by the ultrasound, which clearly demonstrates a left-sided hydrocele. And at this point, without having to send the patient off to have the ultrasound and then book them for a surgery, that was done on the spot. We also used it in the emergency setting, where a gentleman had a trauma to the testicle and developed a hematocele. So quite quickly, we were able to assess the size and the location of the hydrocele and to evaluate the testicle to see if there was any trauma. In this case, there was not. The assessment of a left testicular mass in a young gentleman who presented to our clinic with a suspicion of testis cancer. So rather than sending the patient off to already a state of stress and nervousness to confirm the presence of an intratesticular lesion before enacting surgery, I was able to clearly accurately measure the testicle size, the size of the lesions, and confirm the location of the mass being intratesticular, which then led to a much more prompt surgery for his testis cancer. In this instance, we were able to assess during intracavernosal injection of vasoactive substances for erectile dysfunction to demonstrate the actual arterial insufficiency or venous leak in this gentleman. Here we see captured images of the liver and its contrast to the kidney, and unfortunately in this instance we're able to work up a gentleman who had a renal mass which we initiated the discussion we also sent the patient for a CT so while it did not obviate the need for other imaging it at least started the process of finding the problem and allowing for the patient to understand and get better care more promptly also for the use of treating men with enlarged prostates again something that we commonly do to assess the emptying which typically will use a bladder scan which sometimes can cost more than this Clarius device. So with a lower cost system, I'm able to measure the pre or post void residual. And these are the two images on the left showing an incomplete bladder emptying and the prostate volume with its configuration if or not there is a median lobe. The patient, while I bring out the ultrasound and my iPhone, the first is their amazement that such technology exists and that they can be part of the experience. So rather than going to a radiologist, which typically a technician does the ultrasound, does not interpret or deliver any care, and at that point usually passes it the next day or later in the afternoon to the radiologist to interpret, and then get a report. The patient now is live, witnessing, hearing, and understanding the interpretation of our findings right in front of their eyes. So I definitely think that the patient experience is added of great value with this technology. There is a number of hours per year that I've saved in terms of the patient having to get a requisition, to go to see a radiologist, do the booking, do the procedure, have the report provided, then come back and review the results together. Now, for straightforward penal, scrotal, abdominal, prostate, these are all very straightforward ultrasounds that can be done at bedside and help counsel a patient immediately what the diagnosis is and then move to the better treatments based on those results. During surgery and training with residents, we want to know, did I get all of the tissue for obstruction? Did I remove most of the transition zone? So at the end of cases, this is a nice educative way to assess the quality and integrity of the work that was done. And here we can demonstrate the defect and its size quite quickly of how our resident had done with the tissue resection. As to the evaluation of prostate, we are commonly seeing patients with elevated PSAs, and so we want to determine their PSA density with their volume of the prostate, 
This can be done with the ultrasound right there on the spot. We can see as we're scanning up and down the prostate, along the right side, there's a circular hypodense lesion, about a centimeter and a half in size. And we can throw on the Doppler and see the vascularity of this lesion to confirm if it's solid and vascular or if it's a cyst. And for those performing radical robotic prostatectomy, where the bladder neck dissection can be quite challenging, especially in the presence of a median lobe, we can assess the bladder neck to see whether or not the bladder neck will be something difficult, where perhaps the staff surgeon will do that step of the procedure. And since instances where you have the median lobe, you'll be able to quickly identify that before the case starts and not be surprised when you open the bladder neck. Here we knew from the photos, as we saw on the left, done preoperatively, that at the time of the bladder neck dissection, we would uncover a bulging median lobe and take appropriate measures. We are so tied up with all of our paperwork or our other instrumentations that I think that with the wireless technology, it gives us the freedom that we are using our technology in the emergency room, in the OR, and in clinic, or abroad, outside of the hospital, as opposed to having our machine which is stationed in our clinic and that is where the point of service and care must be. Really, it's the handheld ultrasound that is gonna become the new stethoscope for the 21st century. So it takes what we have in our current armamentarium from our auditory listening with a stethoscope and the tactile limitation of the distance of my fingertip to something way beyond. So without a doubt, I think the ultrasound and the Clarius system allows us to be better urologists.